Uh, uh, ho, ho, no, no. It does end with no. No. Ho, no. no. Ho, no. Ho, no is flame. Oh no. no, oh no. This is new no. New no. New Getting no. a new cloth. Cloth. New cloth. New no. Zuna toke o aoi to de shishu shita new no ga um new tuite ata. Um, I think that's new. Uh, so the cloth has embroidered on it with blue thread. Um, <laughs> an iron glass and this cloth is patched onto something which in this context is the sleeve one of the sleeves um how do you read this word again funny is this word in the kimono oh no no kimono is the thing that you wear it's not this it's just this is just no 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 hi um Ki, ki is like to wear and mono is a thing. Hi. It's kimono. This is not the same as muno. Yes, not the same. But it does sound similar. Hi. No um, relation. So this sentence say Ikutsu ka Ikutsu ka Aru Izu no ni wa an unknown amount several something it's Hi. on the chair. Iro, iro aseta, boro boro no, uh, nuno ga kabutsete aru. The cloth covers, there's a cloth aru, there is a cloth that covers several things, ikutsu ka aru. That is on the chair. No, no, no. It covers the chairs that have several right. things on it. No, there's several chairs. Because Ikutsuka aru chairs. Isu. chairs that exist. There's several of them. If you want to say there's several things, you'd probably say like Ikutsuka no mono or something. Hi. There's several chairs. That were covers with cloth, you know, and the cloth color faded, iro aseta, and it faded in a boro boro way. Good guess. This boro boro yeah. for all for our purposes right now is a noun. Um, so um, it's so the boro boro is faded, which contextually is referring to the cloth. Um, which is always kind of confusing, but boro boro means run down. So the color ran down. Mm, not not that meaning of Coloring. ran down. Um. So you know, if you have a pika pika no cloth, the it's going to be like all shiny right. and clean. A boro boro um cloth, rather than being pika pika, it's going to have probably some holes in it, maybe some stains, maybe some frayed edges. That'd be a boro boro nuno. There's there's some issues with the nuno versus a pika pika no um nuno, which would probably have um would glitter in the sunlight. Pika pika. That makes sense. Ah, one. So by one run like down, I mean it's bad. bad. Yeah. It's so it's old, it's but specifically been... old and bad shape. Bad shape. Old and ragged. Hi. Yes, ragged boro, is a good boro. word for this. Ragged. Ragged is boro boro is ragged. Hi. Boro boro. Boro boro. Hi. It's hard because it doesn't have kanji. Boro boro. Well, it, it's it's a sound boro, effect not. is Hi. is why it doesn't have kanji. So. Uh, <laughs> this sound. Back, uh, that had meanings are so difficult, Bonnie, because I can't imagine the sound and the meaning. It sounds together. like you need to watch more it's, anime. It's boro boro. <laughs> like, how does boro boro mean? Boro boro. Ra like, ragged. I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> like, jeet, jeet, jeet is like unblinking or unmoving. How does jeet is like 
steady. I don't get it. Yeah, either. the onomatopoeia in Japanese is very interesting because there is a pattern to them. <laughs> as you get as as you learn Japanese and like watch a lot of anime, you can like guess most of the onomatopoeias. <laughs> like with relatively like a lot of things that start with S, for <laughs> example, tend to have speed like tato and tato and zutto and all those like sounds have to do with okay. speed. So there tend to be um similar sounds uh, tend to lead to similar meanings. So there is there is like some of that, but you're definitely I correct see. that as um English speakers or whatever, we um definitely don't have these sound effects. It's not like one one, which is obviously the dog barking going woof woof. It's definitely more feeling. <laughs> Than right. two on a monopedia. But yeah, it's 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 all about getting used to it. <laughs> so, yeah, so I sometimes feel like it's it's a two year old that just come up with his own words. It doesn't know what to say, and it's it's just it's boro boro. Hi. It's unbelievable. Okay, I get it now. Okay, um, you translated Hi. this one hundred percent correctly. But I just wanted to double check you know why there's an auto here. Do you? Um, for example, kite He's down. saying that. Hi, he didn't say it, iru. He say aru because he's referring to this object that is no no. This thing is is. Is the I is the uh, ing of the verb, right? It's is continuous present, but it's for the non-living, ob, uh, non-living subject or object or subject so here in this case. That's um, kind of true and kind of not true. So I'm gonna use aru as our ex I mean kaku as our example. Do you know what kaku means? It's to write. To write, correct. Kaku is to, to write. Right. So you can say kaite aru, kaite iru, and kakareru. And they all have um have different meanings. Kaite aru and kakareru have the same meaning. Kaite iru means like I wrote something. So um watashi wa nani ka o kaite iru. I've written something. However, you can change this, of course, with passive form, which would be um nani ka ga ka ka de te iru. Something was written, and contextually, you have a watashi ni in that sentence. Something was written by me. When you do the aru, it gets nani ka ga um kaite aru. The watashi ni is deleted. There's no insinuated doer. Someone probably did it, but we don't care at all about whoever the heck wrote this. We give zero Fs for whoever was doing the action. So kaite aru is what you're probably going to see if they're describing something like what was written on a stop sign, for example. You don't really care who was working in the factory that printed the stop signs writing down. You you don't care. Um, so you would say kaite aru. But if you're talking about the book of Gen Genji, you probably say kakarete iru because the author is important. Or this book, you'd say like the, uh, this book was written, obviously by whoever the author is, uh, Sarah Phoenix or whatever. So with kakarete iru, you have that embedded doer and the doer is relatively important while the aru means the doer is gone. So you translated this perfect. Um, because the thing that is covering things is the cloth. The cloth is covering the chairs. And but we're using aru here rather than um kabu se um dareta is because Khan doesn't know who did it and he doesn't care who did it. Um could have been nobody, who cares? He just want he's focusing on the fact that the chairs have fabric on it, that fabric is covering something. But he doesn't care who did the covering. Money. You say there was a third option, which was kaite, uh, kai 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 kakeru. Is that right? Um, kaite kakeru. 
ka ka de du um is passive form, right? Kaku to write to make passive form, you add aderu. To make it into ing form, um, I did that kakareteiru, which is currently occurring. So currently Kare... has been rich. Currently was written like kaiteiru. Um, you probably say kaite. Yeah, you, you would say kaiteiru was 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 written. Um, what is in writing was in writing, but the that's that's just passive. So all intents and purposes, I'm just saying passive Tag form and adu is the same thing, but um, passive form has a insinuated doer that you could say that the the speaker cares about. Well, adu doesn't have an insinuated doer. Someone it's it's like um the transitive and transitive pairs. Passive Hi. form is the transitive, I think, and adu is the intransitive, is is that kind of idea. So that that's what that is. Hi. Um so we've seen this before in this book, I think, but it's definitely like a not that common word to see. So it's Definitely something to get used to. Um, do you remember how to read this kanji? It's a uh, fut futoi. Perfect. Futoi. Uh, do you know what kizu means? Kizu. Kizu. Kizu is like a place, right, Mom? A location. That's a good guess. Um, I'm not sure what word you're thinking of, but it does look a lot like the kanji for basho. Um, to me anyway, it, it oh. does. Um, very similar. But kizu is um um a wound. It tends to be used more like for scratches. Oh, um rather than like a big like if you cut off the arm, they're probably not gonna use kizu for that. They might use a different word like guy in there somewhere. Um, but kizu means wound in general, but it tends to mean smaller wounds rather than big wounds. Um, not saying it can't mean big wounds, but just as like if you see it on its own, you could probably guess it's more like a scratch than someone's arm been cut off. Um, I, kizu, so, kizu. how do you read this kanji? Kizu, a wound. Hi. Perfect. Kizu. Can, can, can you tell me what this means? We got two words here. Garakuta. 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 Darake. Dara. Darakuta. Darake. Two two actions. So one is garakuta, and then the other is darake. Right. Darake is kind of describing the yeah. garakuta. They're both nouns. Darake. Basically. Specifically, this is a suffix. Dara. Wait, garakuta is a noun, Mani? Yep, Isn't garakuta. that a past tense of some verb? It does look like the past tense of a form, but garakuta actually has kanji. Garakuta, which if you saw the kanji, you would have had a lot easier time knowing it's a noun. Garakuta. This is the kanji for it. It says, I fun lots. This is because garakuta means junk. Things I... you had lots of fun with. Garakuta. Oh, but not useful necessarily. Garakuta. I. Garakuta. Oh, this kanji helps fun. so much. Garakuta. Oh, many. Garakuta. And then darake. Hi. Darake is a negative contact, like, um, Connotation, that's a word. Negative connotation word that is the same as ippai. Ippai. Oh, this, it's like lots, but in a negative yes. way. Like, so it's a lot yeah. in a negative way. So not unlot. It just means it's not a good amount to have lots. So ippai is positive. It's like, woo, I got lots of presents. You'd say, presents to ippai. 
you know, it's you're it's a happy thing. But you can't say presents do darake. That would be weird because right. presents are a good thing. Why, if you had a lot of presents, why would you be upset about Unless it? You want... <laughs> Unless your presents are somehow terrible. <laughs> yeah, if you, had, if you had terrible right. presents, that's when darake would be used to <laughs> show that somebody doesn't like the presents right. I got. Um, so yeah, it just means lots of presents or full of presents. Full of, full of so stuff. using that, stuff what do you loaded. think this word means? Um, kizu, right? We say there was kizu yeah. darake. Yeah. What do you think this a means? A lot of kizu? In, a lot of wounds. Yes. Kizu and kizu tends to insinuate small wounds, so it's a lot of small scratches. Basically, is what that would insinuate, rather than saying a lot of wounds like. I lost my arm and my leg and I'm missing half of my gunt. You probably would use a different word. So this feels more like um, I fell in a bush and I'm just full of scratches on my skin. You know, a bunch of cuts and bleeding. So, ow. Um, but just probably not deadly. Small. You know? I, um, do you remember how to read this word? Wound. So, so. <laughs> I, it is move. Jaw, something. Plus, the jaw Ooh. is actually down here. This is the middle kanji is omote, the front is side it? of something. Yes, you're correct. Right, Mark? Yes, you're correct. But is here the in the side. kanji, here omote. the kanji. So here when the omote... kanji mean. Oh, here. When, om when omote is married, it's pronounced as hyo. Jo. Mu hyo jo. Yo. Mu hyo jo. Right. The oh, front. Jo here. jo here is like your emotions. Right. The emotions that are seen is yep. the front emotions. And right. mu meaning none. So you have no expression at all. So you expressionless. Exactly. Yep, expressionless. So with that, the middle kanji, this guy is hyo. Um, do you remember how to read this word? Hyo. Uh, zen. Right. Men teki. Zen men teki. Zen men teki. So the middle kanji is men. Can you read this word for me? Surface. So surface. That's the meaning. But how do you read it? This is he. he yo for a motte and then men for a surface. Yep. Yo men. men. So front surface. Yo men. Front surface. Um, do you know how to read this word? This is uh, black in the kanji, so it's a uh, roku. Ro 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 it's actually uh, pronounced as no, kudo. No, no, roku. roku. Right. It, it, it is actually pronounced as kudo here. Um, kudo. It, it's, it's not really a married kanji. Part of it is that I don't think there's a second reading for the second kudo. kanji. As in kuroi, right. so it's kudo. Hi. Oh, I get it, Mani. This is kuroi, but in the stem form of the adjective, right. they drop the e. Yep. And it's now in stem form. It's kuro. Right. So when you drop the the e of the adjective, the stem become a noun. Just like when yes. you drop the u or the ru of a verb, the stem become a noun right. as well. That's why you use it in another in a, another uh, noun in order to compound nouns. Yep. Compound noun. That's why we yeah. end up with these two, um, um, this uh, irregular reading of two uh, single reading together. It's, it's, hey. it's neko and then it's kuro. So it's kuro yep. black cat. Kuro neko. Hi. Perfect. Nice. And do you remember our very first line of the book, oh. how to read this kanji? Uh, is need that you do is to be yep. similar to money. I just have a side Hi. thought. There with you. 
it seems like all of Japanese in my is noun based. Yeah. You start off everything with simple nouns and then you add you add a suffix to it in order to give it grammatical grammatical structure. So you start yeah. out with the noun stem and then you can add either the u or the ru form in order to make it into into verbs or yep. if you have like a borrow reading from china you have the actual kanji then you take that kanji noun compound already and you add suru to the end of it which is right. also a suffix way of making nouns into verbs mm -hmm. and then if you have a noun and you put the end like the one we saw earlier with zen men teki the teki acts as a adjective, like something that made it into an adjective, yep. right? Zenmen by itself is a noun, and then teki make it into an adjective. Yeah. Same with na. You take a noun and you add na to it, and you made it mm -hmm. an adverb. Definitely. So in a way, basically, it feels everything like is basically it's my person. I also feel like all verbs are Everything adjectives. basically. If you think about it as well, like grammatically, let's say like their relative clauses, for example, obieta, you just stick it after the noun, it's describing a noun, which is very different than English because we Hi. use a, we actually use something called a conjunction to separate that between that. But in Japanese, they use their adjectives. So with how verbs, you can't end with da afterwards, right? But same with adjectives, if you do like kirei with an e at the end, which is an adjective, you can't add da after that. That'd be weird. So it's just kind of has also like the fact that everything's an adjective. <laughs> They're all nouns and they all connect like adjectives unless there's a particle. It's very interesting for how that works. Hi. Um, hi, hi. Hi, hi, hi. So, it was good off. And now you can take a read our last uh, sorry. two lines of the day. Hi. So it's sore to that that uh nagai teburu ga hitotsu. So he say one table, one long table. That thing is one long table. Good guess. What does to mean? He clarified. Whole. either he's quoting the sore or he's saying mm. right afterward that is right two after very logical conclusions this is kind of like this is more like a generic and so not only are there cloths covering chairs there's also a nagai table ah uh, he's saying on top of that sore yep. to. more even on, on, on top of those other so things. it's basically okay. just and to um, sore that previously mentioned object, object and nagai table ga hitotsu. So yeah. there's the chairs and a long table, and, and that's because sore is one. um a thing, right? So if it said soto, then that would be the to being um the other to, because this would be have to say sore dato, right? Because to as when takes a da after it, right? Basically, because it goes after clauses, goes after uh, sentences, and sore is a noun. Hi. Funny, this is also another reason why I feel like Japanese are based on noun, because here, hi. they just end their sentence with hitotsu. They simply yeah. they simply say one thing. Hi. It doesn't even care to put a da at the end. They don't care this has to, to do with this being a counter. The they don't care to the counters are a little bit like adverb things. Like counters are like its own thing. So you don't really add a da after counters. So hitotsu and ichimai and things like that tend to not get um da after it. Because hitotsu is one thing, but it's not actually a noun grammatically. Like you could do hitotsu no and describe something like that. But like, for example, um, you say hitotsu... Like you could, you'd have a verb right after there, and that'd be like grammatically correct. I can't think of like hitotsu aruku, which um, 
Wait, kind of seems weird here, but it's like one one thing see. runs. Like, <laughs> but but my, I'm not gonna make it sentences on top of my head. My point is that um, counters like this can directly go right in front of a verb, and there's no like glue or something needed there. So it's kind of like it's third special thing that is different than everything else. It's almost more like a weird particle. Like I don't, I don't know what it is. It has its like own random rules where sometimes it's a noun and sometimes it's not. Um, so hitotsu is a little bit. Uh, Counters are confusing because it, it doesn't fully fit in the. This is a noun. This is an adjective. And then it's a counter, which is a noun adverb thing. Squint size at it. What are you? Hi. <laughs> hitotsu. Hi. One long table, and then it's uh hiyo hiyo men wa top surface izu da rake de, and we say darake is like a lot of of a bad thing. Yes, a lot of scratches on the um, and de here is the da, but in the continuation form, so comma. Yes. Darake da, but here he's saying darake de. Yep, the mean and. form of da, right? Yep. And, um, and then he say neko no ashi ni nigeta. The scratches are like nita. that of cats. Oh, nita, nita. Nita futoi. Nita futoi. Ashigatsu, ashigatsu de iru. So it's a, sweet de iru is what it's when you follow to follow um, something. Yeah, it can mean that. This comes from the verb tuku, which means to attach. So following means you're attaching yourself to someone. Here, though, it's probably more like it's attached to the table, this ne? The human, attached to the human. The table. Hi. So the foot, the futoi ashi, the fat foot, it it it's similar to the scratches are. Hmm. So we have this de are, right here. Remember? When, wait, wait, wait. We have this de right here, which you correctly identified as da in te form. Da in te form with a comma has what meaning? Te form and a comma. What does that mean? He's itemizing. He's listing things. Yes. He's, so that is a and. Said, this, thing, this sentence, this clause, is totally separate from the second clause for all intents and purposes. So the thing that nitas, which is not ending I, in a period, we have a relative clause here. We have an adjective clause. So we have a verb acting as an adjective. Is describing a noun. Is it describing putoi? It describing ashi. Hi, ashi, because futo is an adjective, so I have to skip that and describe the leg. So the legs look like what? The legs look like cat foot. Hi. The legs look like cat foot. So it's Fat a very fancy looking foot. table. Fat <laughs> leg. Nice. It's fat this, legs. This is, this is very common for fancy shape. tables. Like, I can't draw it. <laughs> it looks too much like cat feet. But this, this is very, very common for fancy tables. Um, 